Our guest today is Nancy Lelaware Sonnabin, who has written a book uh, regarding her family, the Lelawares, and it covers over a hundred years of uh, interesting achievements. And tell us, Nancy, in writing this story, uh, did you have uh, more than just the history of the family, uh, a mission? Yes, I did. When I was a little child, I was often taken on Sundays to my father's parents' home in Chicago. And it was a wonderful time. My father was full of jokes, as was my grandfather. My grandmother played the piano and there was a lot of food and hilarity. And sometime during those um, get-togethers, this big book would be brought out, The Autobiography of David Lullaware, which was an autobiography written by my great-grandfather. And everybody would ooh and ah over this book. Um, I was young, I was dyslexic, and it didn't have any pictures in it. And I didn't see what was so remarkable about it, frankly. But as the years went by, I began to appreciate that if he hadn't written this book, I would not know about the ancestors that came before him and that I wouldn't know about the difficult time he had in um, the old country, in Germany, and also um, his difficult time in coming to this country and trying to get started here. And well, in 1980, my father had copies made of the big book for each of my four children and for me. And for the first time, I read the book cover to cover and it took on a whole new meaning for me because in it he laid down percepts of how he felt one should lead a good life. And he also stated that he hoped future generations through their own experience would add to these percepts and continue it on for the generations coming. Well, that's... Tell us, uh, you started out in Chicago, but you have very strong uh, ties to here in the East. Yes. Uh, tell us about your uh, family relations here. Um, well, I got married and I had four children in five years. Um, I had my own little clinic, I would say. I had three with learning disabilities, um, dyslexia. Is this dyslexia that dyslexia you have? and attention deficit disorder. And um, I really, it was a time when um, everybody here was very Freudian based, but having grown up in the Midwest, I didn't believe in just talking about things. I believed in doing. And so I set out to figure out how to educate my children, which was the subject of my first book, Something's Not Right, One Family Struggle with Learning Disability. Yes, tell us about the dyslexia. You uh, have brought it to the fore and uh, you are have been working with the groups to understand it and expose it to the public. That's correct. Um, for many years, um, dyslexia was something that was diagnosed only if you failed the first three grades. And finally, there are now definitions that are very scientific, and one knows quite well how to educate these children. 
Unfortunately, many children are still falling through the cracks because there are not enough teachers that are being trained. Many of the schools, the teacher training schools, are still locked into whole language, and this just does not work for dyslexic children. Your, uh, your family uh, seems very long-lived. Uh, you have some parents that uh, reached almost a hundred years. Uh, as you mentioned in your book, uh, Edward Bernays, who was a friend of ours, who lived to, I don't know, 102 anyway. Right. Yes. Uh, tell us about that. Do you, uh, does it carry on uh, with the, uh, your next generation? Oh, yes. Um, my eldest grandchild, um, both her parents went to Harvard and um, were not dyslexic, but had dyslexia in their family. And I kept, um, this child grew up in California and I kept asking her parents um, if she was getting reading and math skills in kindergarten and I was told no, kindergarten is for social. To make a long story short, by the time she was in second grade when I was out visiting her, I, with my back turned the day before I was to leave, or actually the night before, I realized when I went in to um, find some scotch tape that this child was not reading. She had no skills. Well, tell us, uh, in, re in writing uh, a large book like this, uh, would you recommend it uh, to other families uh, that, that have a long history like yourself? I would very much recommend it. I, I think it's a real treasure. Uh, what my great-grandfather left is so wonderful to have. And frankly, I don't think my children and grandchildren have any idea what I've done. And they probably won't until I'm long gone. But I really love my great-grandfather's autobiography. And when my father died, it took on a really big significance to me. Well, tell us, uh, for those who of our viewers who are interested in the book, do you have a website? Yes, I do. It's www.nancylullewear, spelled N-A-N-C-Y-L-E-L-E-W-E-R. There's an E between every letter on lullewear.com and there's no spaces in between. Well, thank you very much for being on the show, and good luck with you, and maybe you have another book left. Oh, I don't know. It takes a long time. <laughs> Nancy, uh, has there been any reaction to your book? Yes, many people have reviewed it on Amazon.com, and also, there was a full-page review on the, in the Hearing Loss magazine, um, which is a national magazine, um, this past month. Well, thank you very much for being on the program. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. You have a website. Yes, I do have a website, and it's www.nancylullaware.com. Nancy Lullaware, Lullaware is spelled L-E-L-E-W-E-R. There's an E between every letter, and there's no spaces. Well, thank you very much for being on the program. Thank you.